have is a balance into all the organization. And that's the way that we are looking for is you see the graphs. It's not just accelerate the process or give opportunities to develop one person and say, ah, we are doing or we are doing something here. No. Everything is growing all together. That's a very, very interesting and very good for us that uh, we, we are develop, uh, in a development process for uh, opportun equal opportunities for everybody. In terms of gender, of course, we, we work with this group to looking for the increase our, our gender and the process, uh, as I mentioned, uh, was developed and, uh, in a, a, lot, a lot of uh, discussion and strategy development with a group that they call She Goes Further, that's a group of manufacturing women. And uh, what they did in uh, a one and a half or two, between one and five or two years ago, uh, the woman, the salary, salary women that are part of this uh, women in manufacturing, they start uh, going to the universities and technical schools to invite women to the plant, to know the plant. They visit the plant for a one day, they explain to them uh, the type of jobs, what we do, it, that uh, the workstation is very, are very friendly, same for the engineering jobs. Yeah, here in Mexico, uh, the, um, I would say in percentage, the amount of women that study engineering related uh, are very low. I'm talking about 17, 20 percent around that. So we need to go and um, make them attractive for them and explain them, explain them why manufacturing is okay for, for women. And uh, they made a, a very, a very good job. Uh, they went to a different university, different, different different technical schools, different careers related with the uh, were very interesting for to hire. And uh, it was a very successful strategy. If they invite a lot of women as soon as they were here at uh, the plant, they know the plant, they say, ah, I wanna I wanna be in the this new 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 experience, new program. And uh, so this uh, this group uh, made a, a very, very good job. The way that they that they do this is uh, first of all they go to the universities or schools they talk about themselves uh, as i mentioned uh, the managers we have in this area uh, they have a management role so they explain them how they grow in quality plan and uh, what they are doing uh, what the, their what is the, their background and their experiences what the kind of experience they need how flexible we are in terms of uh, giving opportunity for a family for a kid things like that and that they made attractive for, for the new people. So, in, uh, in a, I, I want to share with you, I don't know if you have a chance to, to because we have a different uh, forums on, uh, in 5.4. Uh, the experience we have when, uh, when this group of uh, women uh, made an, uh, a plan or a proposal to build a, un, uh, a unit completely with women. Originally, when we started discussions, we have a woman from all the departments, as I mentioned. So we say, okay, the, you can build the unit and uh, we will be with you supporting you require any help. And fortunately, uh, one of, uh, of, of the team, and I will present to you in a, in a picture in the, in the next slide, one of the ladies uh, have, uh, is, uh, is the person who helped us to train our technicians in Dearborn to make the first prototypes of the Maki. Yeah. So she knows all the parts, all the process, and she said, no, I think we, we can build 100% with women. Say, mm, are, you, are we sure are we, how we can prepare this, how we can organize? So all, get, all of them get together. And they came with an idea that we can build the first unit for Mexico that has been made by 100% women. When I say 100%, it includes maintenance activities, more, uh, I mean moving robots, moving conveyors, uh, all the repair required to the, to the process, they, they made that. Uh, Just quick comment, if we can put all in mute, please. Thank you. Thank you. 
So this is, uh, I would say, the output of this uh, planning, this organization, this change on the cultural part of the plant. So allow us uh, to to build a uh, uh, first unit 100% built by by woman. I mentioned that uh, I want to show you the, the lady that start the organization or or main organization of this event. Uh, all of them, uh, uh, for example, Belen, that is uh, in, the, in, the, in the back, Belen Felix, she's the project manager from Final Assembly. Montserrat Reyes, uh, she is the communications. Alejandra Cruz, she's a tool and die stamping uh, supervisor. Janet, she's the manager from Body Shop. Alma Menezes, uh, I mentioned that uh, she helped us to organize the training of all our technicians in Dearborn. So she knows all the processes, knows all the parts, and help the team to to organize the the main activity of how we can we can build the unit. And Maria Ochoa, she is uh, the lady who from Paint who designed the the logo because uh, when we when we start making this strategy and talking with the group, uh, say okay, we need a, we want that the unit be also be part of the connection with them. So Maria start uh, making ideas and, uh, and uh, design this uh, paint in the, in the side of the car uh, that she explained about the woman who, made it, who she made a connection uh, between the logo of, the, of our plant and uh, their connection with the woman. And Silvia Andrade, she's a manufacturing manager. So if we see that this small group start organizing and putting ideas together, hold to assemble the car. 
of course, in the, when we went into the details how to do it, uh, the proposal from them was uh, to first uh, give a chance to, to each department to keep the unit for a, for a week so they can start explaining everybody and train all the women. The training on the workstation prior to build the unit for each person takes three days. So three days of training, and we did three of tra- three days of training. They know about the safety of, per- of the operation of the workstation that that they are going to perform, the QPS, the the elements that uh, they need to know, the parts, and so they can perform the operation when the unit pass to the to the system. And uh, the other part of this is that uh, uh, both teams participate in outings and salaries. They invite uh, the women that are, you know, support department like MPNL, uh, human resources, and uh, all the all the support areas. Actually, my assistant is uh, in the picture. She is part of that uh, uh, construction. All all the women of the plant participate and generate a lot of a lot of energy inside the plant. And of course, all the men were aside as a support for them. They require something, but really was a, a very good uh, experience for us also to know the capability, the organization, and uh, the skills that we have inside the plan for these women. Uh, this is the first time that we made something like this. And for us in Mexico, first time, but uh, we shared this experience uh, with uh, uh, all the manufacturing in, uh, in Ford. And uh, up to now, I'm, not, I'm knowing that uh, this is the first time in four that the uh, is completely built by women. And so part of this uh, celebration of this, uh, uh, this closing the loop of bringing all the women for the organization was how we incorporate a new generation of people, of women, because of the se- in parallel of this, we have other, other activities. We, we bring people uh, vulnerable people also to to be part of the plant, and we made exercises for them also. Uh, we train all the management also to um, to build a, a unit. So all my OCM knows how to build a car. I'm part of the of also an exercise like this, where all the managers build a unit so we can be connected with our people to resolve the issues and. Uh, also, I mentioned that uh, we have a woman in all, all the all the areas. So when we see concepts about the growing inside organization, about breaking the glass, the ceiling glass, I think we are on the on the right path because we have in all the all salary levels on all all the levels of the organization, we have women right now and the managers that I present to you in the picture that uh, they are part also of this exercise, they, they are leading this, this part. And uh, also reducing the, the, the gender or the skill gap and retain because this, this is more attractive for them to be in the operation, manufacturing operation of the plant, also give us a plus on this. As I mentioned, part of this dynamic creates a lot of a lot of energy and dynamic, and we love the design of the of the woman in the car. Uh, that makes a a, a big uh, a big differentiation from uh, the other units that we were built at the same time as uh, as a training units uh, in our operation. So everybody knows, in call a lot of the attention of everybody uh, in the plant. Uh, initially, the purpose of this unit. And it was only for training. And well, the way that we do this is we build a unit, we disassemble and assemble again as many times required so our people can get knowledge of the part, the process, and start getting a skill. But we take the, the unit to show it to everybody, to all the departments, to all the plants. And right now, we're still in using the, in, in use this unit as a training unit. And, but still, it calls the attention of a lot of people and everybody wants to take a picture with, with them and with the unit. So it, it gives us a, a lot of, uh, I would say, expression in terms of, 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 this, uh, of this process. And uh, 
we made uh, uh, as, soon as, as soon as we finish this process inside the plant, and of course, imagine how proud we are of this result of this event, we share with the plant here in Mexico. We have a, a transmission plant in Irapuato, and we have an engine plant in Chihuahua, and we have an assembly plant in Hermosillo, Mexico. So we share with them, we share with them how we organize this, uh, our woman talk with the woman group on those plants, and of course they like, like the idea. So Irapuato made the same thing. They machine and assemble a, one, a transmission completely with women, 100%. At the Chihuahua plant made the same thing. They machine and assembly a complete engine by woman. So the, the dynamic and the energy that this process creates is amazing. So it, it breaks all the barriers of what they can do, but also as an organization for us, it they give us a, a lot of uh, strength on, to understand the, the level of knowledge, the level of leadership we have. So the, these groups uh, organize, uh, put everything together to make sure that they can deliver this kind of, of work. And uh, don't stop there. Uh, we share with the, with the corporate. Uh, I have a forum where uh, we have a, a meeting with the vice president of manufacturing, and I share this, uh, this experience with, uh, with the vice president of manufacturing, and he likes and says, hey, well, we don't share with those former companies, with all the plans of, uh, of four. And we did it. Uh, actually, uh, we, we say it's uh, for corporate. Uh, the video was published uh, in a four corporate communication forum. And uh, in a meeting, we have a we call plant managers meeting that participate all the plant managers in uh, America and also in uh, around the world. And we have this experience and start also making a lot, a lot of uh, energy and people getting uh, around and doing things, similar things to promote the participation of the women in manufacturing but also only to incorporate and then making all inclusive and all together because at the end we want to make the connection. All the organizations work together to deliver a product for our customers. And these products, of course, have the, the hands and the feelings of everybody and the touch point at this, at this unit makes that, that difference. So uh, other organizations contact us as uh, as I mentioned, and for Brazil also, they publish on the, their inside media uh, to promote and uh, to share the experiences we had uh, with the video and the pictures, and the response was very, very, very good on this. So I believe the group of women seeing the plant, uh, uh, we didn't imagine the, the, the energy that creates when you do, so, when you do something like this. Uh, I'm very proud of, of, of this uh, result. And of course, it's all in the video. Uh, this is a picture of the, of the woman's uh, part of the woman uh, that participated because we're more than, than that. It's just final assembly, final assembly area, but a lot of a lot of women participating on this on this process. I don't know if you have questions or comments that that you have. Marco, just a quick comment before we start with the Q&As. Yes. Uh, it will be important to jump um, with, I think, Ulises Perez is here and present him and maybe he can uh, help you with some questions because he's in charge of the human resource of the plant. So that will, yeah, that will be uh, helpful for us, no? If you have something specific for him, and of course, uh, any question for Marcos. Yeah, we suppose he's uh, in the plan that as uh, uh, mentioned, uh, human resource manager, also anything related with, uh, uh, as Julieta uh, mentioned, human resource or woman related with the development of the woman, he can help us on that. Hello, uh, this is Mary from Berlin. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Yes, uh, I would like to 
I would like to ask um, Mr. Madrid or Marcos, <laughs> um, when was this women's car produced exactly? And, and who has it now? Is it sold or...? We started production on this car at the beginning of the year, prior to COVID, because you see some, you saw some picture of in the video, but in certain operations, uh, we don't wear masks. And this was at the beginning of the year. I mean, January, February of the year. And, uh, and it took one week per department. That means uh, uh, the plant of uh, something and boy take one week, as I mentioned, because people used to train fears all the world, uh, if you, let, I will put an example, if you want to, to participate in a stamping and body area, and they train you in the workstation that they, according uh, with, uh, with you, uh, if they train you for three days to understand the operation, parts, process, and make sure the internal safety that you uh, uh, comply with the safety rules. It takes three days that process. And as, after they train the, uh, the person, and they set up the parts, the tools on the, on the line, and, uh, and make sure that every, everything works uh, prior to the build. And after that, they start the build, and they made an assessment or verify that the unit was okay prior to send to the next department. So it takes around one week per department. In a, when the pass from the body to, to paint, to the paint plant, also take one week. In that area, there's, I would say, not so difficult or not so many workstations, but it takes time to paint the woman. The artist we have, and she painted the, the, the woman there, the paint department, so it takes a little bit of time. And the final assembly, we have a, around uh, 240 workstations, so it takes around one week again. Uh, because uh, may, they made the same exercise. They train all the people in their, with the, the process, uh, explaining the safety rules, explaining the tools, set up all the material, uh, start building the unit, and at the end also they inspect and make sure that the unit can run, because of course we want the unit to be fully functional, and, uh, and they took that time also for that. So it starts at, I would say, end of January, and. Uh, we have a break during March during the COVID, and uh, April and April we end up with the, with the June. And of course, the unit we keep uh, originally was set up to to train and destroy the unit, and due to successful uh, that help us uh, to to communicate with everybody, we keep the unit, and uh, we are using uh, to show the people and uh, to share the feeling with other organizations. Okay, thank you. But where is the car now? Is it? Do you sell it to somebody, or is it? Uh, what do you do with the car? Uh, because this car is a prototype level, is not sellable. We want to we want to keep us for as long as possible. Uh, the last request we have is that uh, uh, we are trying to send uh, to Birmon to show in Birmon uh, with the corporate. We, we are. Doing that because we, we use it for training and some parts get damaged. Uh, Alma Menezes, uh, who is the person to organize the final assembly part, she is helping us to replace damaged parts and we are going to send the unit to the airport. Okay, um, Ms. Madrila, it's Charlene here from South Africa. I've got a question for you. Um, are you aware of any other car factories in the world which have a higher percentage of female employees? Have you benchmarked against other uh, factories around the globe? Yeah, in, in Site 4, and I will, I will add, talk because I have I had a team working in another plant before. Uh, there is no, I would say, we don't compare if we are better or not with, in terms of gender or in terms of diversity with other plants. Uh, we, we have a corporate strategy and we are following that strategy. But as I, mean, uh, I want to mention, I, I work uh, during the launch of Silent Plant, FTM. And uh, also, we make not similar exercises, but we made also a lot of work to bring women to the operation. 
And also I work in Sanan India to, to launch a new plan in Sanan India. And we made that also a lot of strategies to bring women to the to operation. But we don't make, actually, I'm not interested to make a comparison with that because the local environment or the, I would say the local schools, the graduates, the amount of graduates that can, they can offer is different on each region and each country. So each country, each plan needs to have a, a their, their own strategy, how to incorporate more diversity in their operation. I don't know if that's you, you have a comment on this. No, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, I think the, the, the numbers are basically the same in the whole auto industry, in the old, old, uh, OEMs. We're striving to, to work to increase that number, but it's around 20 to 30 percent, more or less. Um, the, 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 the problem, the biggest problem we have right now is in the management level. The, the highest le leadership levels is where we need to improve and start working on a path in order to increase OCMs as operating committees with more women. That, that, because it historically has been kind of like a male industry. So that's why Marcos is saying we work really hard with communities and with schools and technical schools and universities in order to attract women because uh, Especially in Mexico, it was supposed to be a male industry because it was supposed to be a lot of physical uh, uh, effort. So uh, we're working on that, and, and the highest challenge we have right now is on the leadership levels. Hi, Marcos, this is Nadine from Australia. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering um, when you're in full production of the Mac E, what percentage of women will be on the floor um, when that phase happens? So, will all of these women still be playing a vital role? As in, you said there are uh, 240, for example, work structures in the final assembly. What percentage of that, for example, would be women? In uh, generally speaking, uh, I would say 20%, but if you go inside the department by department, it has some variation. The highest department or the, the highest level of woman in uh, one department is a pain where we have uh, 50 50. But in standing, maybe we have a 10%. But in total plans, we, we are uh, around 20%. And um, it might be a question for you, Lucy, but uh, in Australia, I know that we really struggle to attract and retain females in the auto industry. Um, but I don't know, you were saying you talk to people at um, a tertiary level at universities, but is there any talks with people that even younger? We find that um, it's actually really good to talk to even younger girls, like primary age, even before they're sort of taught, you know, that they should be doing certain roles, be hairdressers or be, you know, uh, all these other, all right, these other right. really, you know, stereotyping girls girls from a very young age, um, are you able to sort of talk to girls even younger to see their career paths? Marcos has been pushing uh, on that regard very, very hard, and, and uh, our life path is particularly that, Nadine. Uh, what we're doing is we're working with people, uh, high school and even middle school girls. We're bringing them into the factory. These women in manufacturing, uh, the managers are talking to them and, and, and just letting them know that manufacturing and or auto, auto, auto plants are a place for women. Uh, to start breaking those stereotypes from a very young age, we're talking about girls from 12 up to 18, uh, before they get into university or before they get into technical schools. And uh, that's how we're working with the community. We, we have to work with the community to start changing that mindset uh, in places nearby the plants. And that's what we're planning to start moving on and doing in the different plants in, in Mexico too, to start attracting uh, people from young ages. And particularly what you're saying, breaking that paradigm and, and that stereotype that women can only have certain certain jobs, not working in another industry. Sorry, Marcos, you were going to say something. No, it's okay. Uh, what, what I would say is that um, something that job passed in the technical level, because um, in a, I would say to get women in a maintenance department, we struggle a, a lot. But what it works is that the people inside the plant invite uh, uh, related people to them in their families. That helps us a lot in the maintenance part because I would say for production or engineer level uh, with the strategies that uh, we just mentioned, it works for us, but in the maintenance part, 
that people inside the organization help us to bring people to the mind and that are women to the manufacturing. And, and also we are, the good thing here is that we are not alone. Here in Mexico we have, uh, as I mentioned, different plans, but also corporate offices and PD offices. And uh, what, what happened is that, uh, same as we are putting a lot of effort on this, uh, other organizations like Bush team, like engineering, where all the women are growing inside those organizations, are doing the same kind of strategy. So the dynamic of the synergy that we have uh, along the all the four of Mexico is very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comment, question? Maybe I could just ask one more question and probably Boris again. Just um, in, in terms of uh, when you um, have job availabilities, um, roughly what percentage are you seeing uh, you know, male versus female actually applying for jobs at the application stage? It's definitely kind of like 70-30. We really have to push to, to ensure uh, more women start coming to the recruitment places. Uh, we're also working with vulnerable groups uh, LGBTs, uh, people with disabilities and stuff. And that's kind of like 4%, but women versus men is almost 70, 30. And that makes sense because it's the percentage of women studying in, in technical schools or, or engineering careers, you know, in university. So it's definitely that. And that's the same population we have in schools. So uh, the thing we're working with right now is with universities and technical schools in order to ensure more women are entering uh, those specialities in order to bring them to work with us or any OEM that has to do with manufacturing. The community work is very important for us right now, working with universities and with technical schools and with communities around the plant. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I have another question. Would I be correct in assuming that women earn the same amount of money for doing the same job that a, a man would do? Is, is that a policy at, at Ford, that equal pay for both genders? Definitely. There's, there's, there's no, no difference on that regard. regard. They make exactly the same. Could I ask a question? Um, what percentage of women do you think will buy the car? I don't know if you know that answer, Marcos. I, I, I really don't know what the, what the demographics are in that regard. We'd have to check with that with, uh, with marketing. Do, do you know that, Marcos? I don't have the data right now. But Matt, what, what we can do is uh, bring you back uh, some answer from the marketing team. Okay. Yes, we take that question. But, but at least me. That, that <laughs> for sure. I have another question. Hi, it's Melvin again. Um, so now that you have some experience of the women in the factory, so what does ha what what have they brought other than just their gender to the factory and to the working culture? We have we have a, I would say that um, uh, in terms of diversity and the way of seeing the things, the way we uh, want to approach the future. Integrating, as we just mentioned, only women, because also we work uh, with disabilities, vulnerable people, putting everything all together, that's, that's the challenge. And putting all together, not just to produce a car, putting all together to be the best. Because, because uh, one of uh, the things that we are working here very intensively is that we want to be the best in electric cars in the product, but also as a plan. When, uh, when uh, if it, it sounds like a slogan, I would say it can sound like a slogan, but the we really work to deliver the, the best, oh, is that, that makes the difference. Because you need to take the best of 
each person to make it great. So we are working on that. We want to deliver to our customers the best product that ever come for. And, and that's an excellent question, Murphy, because sometimes you see uh, gender equi equi equity just as a, a number. You know, we have to achieve a certain uh, number in order to, to s s look as if we're diverse. It's not, it's not the way we we're working here. The thing is, uh, the more different approaches we have, and female and male have different approaches to gender, uh, the more ideas we generate, and that has been working very, very well for us. Uh, this idea generation that has been going on, this uh, parenting breaking and stereotype breaking has been working a lot because it doesn't only work for women, it works for men because their paradigms change too. So we have a lot of communication, trust increases, and uh, the, the generation of ideas, uh, the generation of things going wrong, the generation of continuous improvement just boosts up. So that's, that's the experience. And of course we've seen women uh, working uh, very well, or at least better, in certain activities than men. For example, forklift drivers. Uh, women are doing an excellent job there. So, I mean, there's different things, but I think the most important thing is the trust and the communication and the generations of ideas we have with different types of, of, of minorities, genders, and stuff. It's, it's not only one-sided. We have a lot of different perspectives, and that's what, what works best for us. I have a question. How many uh, couples, how many married couples or single couples work uh, with you? Do you have a number of no, I don't. That's a good question. We have a lot of relationships starting to on me. I mean, they work together for eight to 12 years. And that's something important because relationships start generating. But the number is low because uh, they are very young. I mean, people who are entering the plant right now, the the the, the average is around about 25, 23. So uh, they're starting to get to know people here, and I'm sure they're going to be married just uh, uh, further in time. But it's not a number that uh, uh, an, an important number that jumps. I mean, I, I really don't know, but it's not a high number. We also have parents and, and sons and daughters, too, because people who started working here around about 10 years ago are already uh, uh, referencing their sons and daughters, and their sons and daughters are, are working with them right now. We have around t from 8 to 10 uh, father-son-daughter relationships right now. But that's a good question. I'll find out how many people are married. Uh, I have a question, as Nadine from Australia, and I have a question about a sort of future production. It's inevitable that the Mustang Coupe will come to us eventually in an electric vehicle. Is that likely to be built from your plant as well? Um, I think they're, they're Michigan now, aren't they? We don't, um, uh, we don't have a uh, clear information yet, but I think uh, Julieta in the future can share uh, whatever we, we have a confirmed process for Yes, Nadine. By now, we are searching um, China, United States, and Europe. And uh, this is Melody again from Finland. Um, and do you do the testing as well? Do you ship directly the cars to um, to Europe? Yeah, in our plant, we are going to start, actually, we already ship cars uh, for Europe. It will be part of our market. And uh, right now, we just can do it for marketing purposes, but in the future, we are going to to send to customers. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite get that. Do you test, test them there and then ship them directly to Europe or...? Yes, we, we test here, we make all the uh, assembly and testing here, and we ship to Europe. Up to now, yes, for uh, sales and marketing, but near future to customers.
Any other comment or question? Oh, can I just, that's Maggie from Scotland again. Um, many years ago, my mother, my mother worked in the ships in Scotland and they found that the women were much better at doing the delicate tasks, like wiring up compasses. And I wonder if you find that too in your plant. We have a concept where we design workstations for everybody. We don't, uh, I would say, we don't make a station for women or make a station for men or for older people or young people. We design the workstation so everybody can perform the operation. And that gives us a lot of flexibility. Yeah, maybe Daphne, we can share with all the team, um, and with, with all the audiences, the, the um, exoskeletons. No, that it's a good story. Yeah. Of course, that it's a good story. This, yes, that we have in this plant. And I don't know if uh, there is another comment. We are running uh, the last nine minutes. Um, any other comment or question? Yes, please. Here. Go ahead, Fran. Um, what are the following actions contemplated in this objective of continuing to promote and support female participation in the manufacture of vehicles? Do you have similar actions uh, to Maki in mind uh, with other models or another level? Yeah, as, uh, as I mentioned and also Liz mentioned, uh, in the process we have that we want to be the best. We have a continuous uh, plan for training and develop our people. Just to give you a brief idea what we did in the past is that people coming from college or for high school, we, give them, we offer them to continue studying and get an engineering degree. So inside the organization we develop, so that gives us a lot of strength to, for the future models, we can develop a lot of activities during the launch. Also, in the process of uh, to, go, to go to a mature organization, uh, we develop our leaders, so we call them a, a work group leaders. We put a lot of training and experience uh, to give experiences to the people to take better decisions in doing the operation. So we continue uh, having a, a training process and a development process because we want to grow people inside the organization. Uh, when we when we develop uh, inside organizational leaders, they stay with us and they grow with us. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, okay. I wonder if uh, uh, Marcos could, could tell us a little bit about the production of the market itself and and of the plant. Has it started already and how many cars uh, per day do you produce and stuff like that? And what's the, what's the most difficult part in, in building this electric car? That, that, where are the most of the challenges? Fortunately, uh, the design of the new electric cars, are because of the use of the technology, this car was designed everything digitally, so you can verify and test the car prior to build the car. So in terms of how difficult or is there to build the car, it's not difficult to build because the technology on nowadays uh, allow us to test everything before we build different units. Actually, uh, my organization participates that we call virtual builds. So uh, digitally we can build the car and make sure that all the parts, all the process get together without any issue. So when we pass to the next phase that is to develop the tooling, we know that we can build the car. So we can design the tooling to make more easy for our people to build the car. Right now, we are uh, on the last phase that we build, we build around 400 cars for testing. We just finished that part. And uh, this testing is for durability, for climate, for all the stress that the car can be around the world. And uh, we send these cars around the world also. We test it here and send it around the world to make sure that in any environment, the car will perform at the same level. So we are on this part. And as I mentioned, the next step will be the production of the customer, and that will be according with the demand. We are going to adjust whatever the demand is. We are going to react on that. Okay, thank you. 
we are very happy because you will, I, I hope you see the chart uh, and you will see the level of the quality that we can uh, deliver at this point. It's very, very, very good. And uh, you know that uh, behind the decision of buying a car is a woman, of course, talk with your family and choose the money, the best. You know. When you drive an electric car, you change your mindset around the, 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 the functional sound, the noise, things like that, it shifts from the customer perspective. It's very, very nice. And the performance, excellent. You know that uh, I just talked to the Finnish import press today, and they said that the market will be in Finland probably in January or February. It's going to be minus 30 Celsius here. <laughs> so that's a challenge. <laughs> Yes. Well, um, I just want to thank you, um, Marcos, uh, Ulises.